YouTube, YouTube, what's good? It's your boy, Mr. Business. Coming back at you with another video. I know I've been MIA for like three weeks. So, um, yeah, just hadn't do I really making a video. And although I didn't have COVID no more, you know, I had COVID three weeks ago. I was over it for the most part, but uh, body was still, you know, fighting the little last day. Um, and now I feel good. I feel good. All right. So, yeah, I got a few things to talk about. I got a few things to talk about because I ain't been up here for three weeks. So, before we get into that, let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you could be anywhere else on YouTube, but the fact that you clicked on my channel, I greatly appreciate it. All right. So, what's been going on? All right, let's, let, let's get into some USA stuff first of all. All right, so a couple of months back, USA implemented a safety bonus. And how you got the safety bonus was you couldn't have any in-house HOS violations or any outside HOS violations. Um, and... You had to do a pre and post training. I believe that was only two requirements to get safety bonus. Um, so they have since now added some more stuff to it. So now, you know, with that being said, your pre trip has to be at least nine minutes long and the reasoning according to USA for this is that they feel too many people are rubber stamping their pre-trips and post-trips so they wanted to attach a time limit so that people would actually do them. Um, what else? Uh, it was something else they wanted you to do too. They also tried to implement and say that you had to be active and driving 70% of the month to receive that safety bonus. Now that, everybody threw an uproar at that because what is me having to be on the road have to do with safety? In fact, that just goes the other way around. Being me being on the road more is less safe. Um, so a lot of people, rightfully so, I believe, you know, um, pitched a fit about that. So they dropped that requirement. So um, now you have a few more things required before you can get the safety bonus. Um. I feel what they're trying to do, but I also feel that it's not really fair. Okay, let's okay. So let's let's do it this way. Let's say I do my pre-trip. Everything is good. Okay. During my trip something happens to my tire all right let's say i'm going through the scale house i get pulled over and now that tire has caused me to get put out of service until i get fixed okay so now that messes up the safety bonus that i got for something that i can control on a tire Know what I'm saying now I retread the tire tire everything was good played it properly you know everything was good now that messed me up and I'm not gonna lie man these trailers for one have tire issues all the time and for two for us to replace tires it's like pulling teeth with maintenance to approve for us to get a new tire and 
you get tired of that. You get tired of saying, going to get a tire replaced and then getting told, oh no, that tire is good because of it still falls within safety standards. So we're not gonna approve you to get a new tire. That shit gets old. It does. And until that changes, I mean, we are out. They want us to do this safety stuff, but then when we do what they want us to do, we get told, oh no, we're not gonna replace that. We're not gonna do that. That doesn't help. It doesn't make sense. So if they want us to do our part, then USA needs to do their part. You know what I'm saying? Like I always say, they got these record-breaking profits. So you can't tell me these little safety issues that we have where we want tires replaced is costing them a lot of money. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, so that's it pretty much on the USA side. Uh, that's changed. Now, all right, so we're going to get into something else, which is I have realized now that a lot of people, this is my opinion, a lot of people who are new coming into USA, they don't know how to run the low board, which is causing them to not make the money that they want to make. All right, now what makes me say this? All right, a few videos back, I, I said that if anybody needed help, you know what I'm saying, hit me up, put my number down, put my email address down, all right? One person did, one person did. He said he watched my videos. I ain't gonna say his name. But I'm, I'm gonna call him my mentee because now I feel like I'm his mentor. All right, so he, he actually hit me up. He hit me up, this could have probably been like three or four weeks ago. And he said, hey man, you know, I watch your videos and everything, so this is my situation. And, you know, if, if, I, if I can't get the situation fixed, I really feel like I have to bounce from USA. So he explained the situation to me, and I was like, all right, all right. I said, I can help you. I can help you. Uh, give me two weeks. You know, everybody has that set number that they want to hit on a consistent basis. And, you know, his numbers is that he wants to hit on a consistent basis. It's in line with what I want to hit on a consistent basis. All right. So, um, one of the things that he was doing was asking his DM to find them loads. Alright. And I told him, nah, bro. You don't want to do that. You're running your own company. You can't put somebody else in charge of the money that you want to make. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's a big no. So, I'm going to be blunt when I say this. If you are new and you're coming over here, alright, and you are asking your DM to find you loads, stay a company driver. Because that's not what coming over here or going into any other company where you're running a load board and you have to pick loads yourself, that's not what you want to do. If you want your DM to give you loads, stay a company driver. Not ready. Not ready. All right? So that was one of the things I told him. I was like, look, stop doing that. Um, another thing I, you know, you know, he was booking, and when he was booking his, booking his lows, he was booking them kind of tight. So we all book lows that may be a little tight here and there, you know, but I said, you don't want to do that because any thing that happens, i.e., have a tire blowout, i.e. the shipper takes too long to load you, i.e. traffic is going to make you late 
for your next pickup. So you want to get some room in, in between your pickups. And I told them the only, really, the only time I book tight is if my loads are, you know, less than 50 miles apart. And yeah, I can book kind of tight because I don't have that far to go. But when you're booking loads, your drop off is at 10 o'clock in the morning and your pickup for your next load is at 2 o'clock p.m. but you gotta travel 100 miles or you know 120 miles it's not, and you gotta live on load nope I guarantee you 9 times out of 10 you're not gonna make it on time alright so um, help them fix that issue So, all right, so that was another issue. So another thing that we did that I showed them is deadhead, all right, deadhead. You, you can't be out here deadheading a lot of miles and expect to make a lot of money, all right? So I told him, now there's a time that you can deadhead for a load, a good load, but that, that's not all the time. To me, and the way I run, and this is my opinion, but it works for me, is if I'm going to deadhead for a bomb load, the best time for me to do that is when I leave the house, okay? At the beginning of the week, when I leave the house. That will be the most that I deadhead to get a load. Anything after that, it's gotta be within a range. I don't deadhead no more than 100 miles if, when I'm out there, you know. I don't, I don't. If, so whatever load is within 100 miles, I'ma take. Cause I'm not deadheading, you know. I was just, I, I'll, let me back that up. Most of the time, and I will say 90% of the time, my deadhead between loads is within a 100 mile radius. Every so often, there's a load out there that I'm like, hmm, all right, I'll go get that load. So there are exceptions, but you can't be out here deadheading every week, a long time, long distances, and expect them to make a lot of money. All right, so I told him that. So we fixed that issue because, you know, he was out here dead at between drops and it's causing him to be late, causing him to you know, get loads off of him and it's hurting his pockets, all right? So that lets me know that the people coming over here would do greatly to have a mentor to show them the ropes to how to be successful over here at USA. Um, I don't know if USA they was they said they was going to start a mentor program, you know. And here's the thing: you don't have to be in the truck to mentor somebody. You don't. I talk to this dude, we talk every day now. We talk every day. And now, he's booking his own loads. You know what I'm saying? Because I told him, I said, give me two weeks, bro. I said, give me two weeks. I'll have you where you want to be. And I did. These last couple of uh, settlements, he's been damn happy. Been damn happy. I helped him with his last week schedule, so... This week's settlement, or next week's settlement that he's gonna see, you know, he's gonna see, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna see some, some bread. He's gonna see some bread. But honestly, to be consistent out here, um, his numbers and my numbers are similar. What we wanna make is similar. And honestly, it's, it's not hard 
and I told him to be patient to make, you know, to, to see them settlements that, you know, he brings home after all expenses that are, you know, four, five, six grand, you'll get those. I said, you have to be patient. I said, you're not getting, gonna get that all the time, not here. I said, but for the money that you wanna make consistently, if you're doing everything right, you're not deadheading, you're managing your fuel, that's easy to get. That's easy to get. Even when you have something happen like traffic, I showed him what loads to pick so that when he does have his situations that make him run behind, I showed him what loads to pick that he doesn't have to worry about. He can absorb that lost time and still be on time. Yeah, there are loads out there. You can, you can book. So if you have a a, a blowout or the shipper takes too long, or you get caught up in traffic, there are loads that you can book that you can absorb that time that it cost you and still be on time. So needless to say. A lot, I, I feel, because looking at our Facebook, you know, a lot of people are up there, and outside from, the, you know, the, you know, your load canceling, and, you know, because you can't do shit about that, that's going to wreck your whole week, you know what I'm saying, you have a, a load that cancels, and it seems like it's always the highest band load that cancels, it's not, it's not, the bullshit loads never cancel. It be the the lows that are setting your week. So when those lows cancel, then shit, you think about it. That two hundred fifty uh, uh, truck order not used, that don't that don't do shit but provide you fuel money for next week. So yeah, those you know when those high pan lows cancel, you know your week is like fuck. And it's gonna happen. You just gotta. Absorb it the best way you can. But outside of that, and breakdown issues, you can make consistent bread. And everybody's, I don't know where everybody falls on what's consistent, what amount is consistent for them. I just know what's consistent for me. And then talking to my mentee, what money was consistent for him. It's easy to make. It's, it doesn't, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Especially once you know how to run. Once you know how to look for loads on the load board. Once you know how to leave your house and all that good stuff. That money's easy to make. It took me six months, about six months, to get the load board down where I could make money consistently. I was seeing, you know, good money here and there. But to consistently make it, it took me six months. So to be able to help somebody, you know, he only been here for two months. So to be able to help somebody understand how to do that, um, it feels good. It feels good. And now, he like, yeah, I ain't leaving USA. I ain't leaving USA. He was like, it's, it's money out here. And it is. Anyway, there's money to be made here at USA. Um, it's, you know, everybody's definition of good money is, is different. For me, I can make good money here depending on the lower board and what the low is looking like. But I, what I can do here is make consistent money that keeps, you know what I'm saying, my house hold bills paid and allows me to put money in. Oh, I can make that here. I can. So I don't have no problem making that. But good money like where it's just like damn. Ooh, wait, I am banking. That's only like once, you know, every you know what I'm saying? I probably can make that 
like I'll see that like once a month, you know what I'm saying? Where I can see the loads that be like, oh yeah, that's I'll take that load and then build around it to make me have an awesome week. That's not every week, you know what I'm saying? That's you know, for me it's been happening about once a week. So um I don't know how USA is running their their mentor program if it even got off the ground, but for new drivers coming in, they should and I've seen plenty of people on Facebook on our board that says, hey, I'm willing to mentor new guys that come in. So there are people, and I will call them veterans of USA, who are willing to mentor new people so that they can get out of the gate and not feel like my mentee did and say, hey, after two months, he ready to leave USA because he not making no money. And he told me what he was making for two months. And that was company driver money. That was what I was making as company driver. So there are veterans out here who's willing to, to mentor people. And I'm one of them. I'm one of the mentor somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that I have all the answers. But I'm successful. I'm not I don't usually get up on Facebook talking about I'm not making no money. In fact, here's a it was a good example. Somebody posted in our Facebook group and the question was what keeps people here at USA? What is keeping people here? at USA. Now, a lot of you people are about to be surprised when I say a lot of people say because I'm still making my money. Be a shock. That is a shock to some of y'all who probably watching and say, what? A lot of people responded to that post, me being one of them, because I said the same thing, because I still make the money that allows me to enjoy a better lifestyle, definitely more so than when I was a company driver. When I was a company driver, shit, my head was just above water. But being here at USA has allowed me to come out of debt, build my credit, get my credit on the right track has allowed me to go on vacations that I probably wouldn't have been able to go on as a company driver. So yeah, that's what a lot, that's what USA has allowed me to do. Do we want more from USA? Absolutely. Damn right. I do. There's a, there's, there's a lot that they can improve on. There is a lot. But to say that USA has not been helpful to me, I would be straight up lying to you. I would be straight up lying to you. And so, and that Facebook post made me realize it's, it's a lot of people out there that feel the same way I do because I've seen people that answer that question that normally don't even post on Facebook, which goes back to me saying, I said back a few videos ago, there's people that don't even post on, on Facebook at all who are doing just fine. So, I think, you know, a mentorship program should be heavily encouraged uh, in orientation. It should be. And I think USA should go and ask people who are willing to mentor people, hey, can you mentor this person coming out of orientation? I would. No problem. No problem. And that person will be successful if they're willing to listen. I will say that my mentee was willing to listen and implement the stuff that I was telling him to do. So yeah, I think a mentor program would be great. Alright, so that's that's all about. So so yeah, so that's what I've been doing the last few weeks. If anybody's watching my video, 
and would like to um, hit me up, ask me questions, man, I'm, I, I'm, hey, I'm available. You can hit me up all the time. We both out here doing the same thing for the same reasons. So I don't have a problem answering any questions you got. Um, I'll go into my weeks. Like I said, I ain't been up here in three weeks. So uh, let me see. Going back three weeks, um, my first—the mm, first week that I was absent, my my um, my settlement. Uh, it was low. It was low. I think it was only like eleven hundred. No. Let me take that back. My settlement wasn't low. It was my settlement was 1100, but they forgot to put the fuel surcharge on there, and that was for um, reason why I was 1100. If they would have put the correct fuel surcharge up there that they were supposed to, um, I actually made 2400 that week. So, another thing I told my mentee is you find out you have to go over your settlement like a fine to home. In addition to being in charge of your own money, I mean, that's a part of it. You got to go over your settlement with a fine tooth comb to make sure that you get paid all the things that you're supposed to get paid for. He didn't know that he could tell him to put the money on his car. I was like, yeah. So when they was shorting me that settlement, I hit my DM up. I said, hey, you mentioned this settlement.